We're on number one of the 48 ways. Number one of the 48 ways reads very simply. The Talmud. The Talmud means study. But when the rabbis say the Talmud was study, they mean the ultimate in study. What does the ultimate in study mean? 24 hours a day, no let up. Every moment of your life. You should live to 120. Constant study. That's the first aspect. The second aspect of constant study means continuous, no interruption. If you're not going to study 24 hours a day, you studied one hour, no interruptions. The third aspect is consistent. Use rhythm for study. You know, you go to university, the same hour, the same class every day that they give it, right? They don't switch around your hours. They don't confuse you. Use your rhythm. The fourth aspect is repetitive. You've got to study the same subject all your life. What is life? <laughs> you haven't reached the end. The fifth aspect is pervasive. You have to be a studier. That's what a human being is. A studier of life. A seeker after living. This is what we are, philosophers. This is the real you. Whether you're touring in Europe, whether you're visiting a, a college, whatever you're doing, you're seeking, you're searching for experiences. You want it with understanding, with awareness. Now we'll figure out how to do it, but I'd like to focus your attention on why, on what, what this is. Have you ever been on a bus and seen a man taking a dollar bill and throw it out the window? I mean, would that be an experience? You take a look, wow, you know, what's going on here? Yeah. Takes another dollar bill and throws it out the window. Ugh. In fact, how many is he going to throw away? Well, every five minutes, another dollar bill. This guy's wacky out of his head, yeah? At the end of the run, you get to Tel Aviv, right? He says, pardon me, can you lend me some money? You understand what I'm talking about? You ever been on a bus and watch a guy throw five minutes out of the window? A half an hour out of a window? An hour out of a window? But on a bus, everybody's doing it. That's all right. Looking out the window, watching the scenery flash by like wood in a glaze, yeah? All right, the first two minutes you were really examining the scenery. Yeah. You're looking, oh, a hill, another hill. Gee, look at those mountains. Wow, that's the first five minutes. After that, it's ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Now, which is more important, five minutes or a dollar? Life, is life valuable? What are you throwing it away? What are you doing? What, are you going to a zombie state? But you've got to realize that if you're wasting life, if you're wasting an hour on something which is crazy, then should we trust you with living? You wouldn't lend this guy any money. Would you lend him any time? Don't lend him any of your time. <laughs> huh? Okay. So we're going to break this up into five different sections. Roman numeral one is that constant. All the time, grow, every moment of your life. So, how do we go about this? It's a first, you got to make that decision. 24 hours a day, I want to use my mind, I want to grow. I want pleasure, I want awareness. 24 hours a day, I don't want to waste a minute. I want to move. You notice some resistance in you when, when you hear that? Yeah? What are you, ah, this is a slave driver. This is terrible. This is like all work and no play will make John a dull boy. Yeah, Ooh, what kind of... That's what I expected from Judaism, these outrageous demands. Yeah. So number two is get rid of the myth. Don't think that the ultimate pleasure... You know what the, the myth is? You come from Western civilization and you're decadent. Did you ever hear that? What's your name? Jeff, did you ever hear that we're decadent in Western civilization? Me and you, right? You agree? A little bit, right? But let me prove it to you conclusively and give you the definitions so that you'll know what you want to avoid. Decadence is something to avoid, right? So I would ask you, what is the opposite of pain? The opposite of pain is pleasure. That's the Western answer. And that, according to... I will focus your attention, is the definition of decadence. Why? 
Because in truth, focus your attention, in truth, the opposite of pain is no pain, is comfort. To think that the ultimate pleasure is to be comfortable is a definition of decadence. So don't work hard at your job. Don't take a job that's too tough. Don't take no subjects that's too tough. Avoid pain at all costs. Don't get married. That's painful. Don't have children. Ah! Too much pleasure? No. Too much pain. Do you see that? <coughs> Jeff, what's your parents' greatest pleasure? They, they may say that it's the joy that they get from their children. The joy that they get from their children, Jeff says, right? What's their greatest pain, Jeff? Children. Uh, children. You know, I'm telling you, that's the way it is. So people say, oh, what, am I going to have children? Pain. Yeah. But what about the pleasure? If you don't have the children, you don't have the pain. You don't have the pleasure. So the first thing is realize that Americans are into comfort. Comfort, the ultimate comfort. I'll have you know, you know what the ultimate comfort is? What's the ultimate comfort, Jeff? The ultimate comfort. Close. 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 Sleep closer death. To be or not to be. Huh? Just quit. And we have at times, you know, tough final disappointment with a friend, with a girl. We say, maybe we'll make an end to all of this. Is it worth the effort? So little suicides is, let's make an end to this afternoon. It's a flop anyway. How do we kill it? Pac-Man. <laughs> so, get rid of this myth. The ultimate pleasure is not to be comfortable. The ultimate pleasure is to be fully alive, which takes pain. So therefore, let's consider whether or not we're willing to take the pain of thinking all day long. Yeah? Number three is, you've got to decide is life good or not? Is life good? What do you say? What's your name? Mike. Is it good to be alive? It's very dangerous to say it's good at times. The times are far and few between. But what is good about life? It's good to be alive for its own sake because you exist, you're being, you're aware. If life is good, awareness is good. You don't want to waste any bit of life. You're just not using it properly. That's the idea. Do you look at life as growth, as what do I want? I want to understand it all. It takes some training. Look, I, I want to focus your attention right at the beginning. You know, this is the first of the 48 ways. Everything in this world that's worth accomplishment takes a bit of drill. You remember when you rode a bicycle? Could have sworn you'd never be able to to stay on it. Come on, everybody here ride a bicycle? Yeah? You remember the first time you got on the bicycle? What did you do, ride right away? Oh, fell, off. fell off, right? You figure, what, this is crazy. You can't stay on a bicycle. There's none. But you looked around, other guys do it. Oh, huh. What am I going to admit that I can't do it? I mean, if these twerps can do it, I can do it too. Get on again, yeah? You fall off another time, you say, this is crazy. But you go on again. Any of you ever ride a unicycle? Boy, you got to get on a unicycle. Then you really could swear it's a murder instrument. Yeah? It's just there to kill you. Yeah? Until you see kids riding around the unicycle. You say, hey, wait a moment. Yeah? So it takes some time to master a way. A way of life takes some time to master. Yeah? It's not going to be easy in the beginning, but once you're on it, you're on it. And you just ride around on a bicycle even without hands. Yeah? It takes some time to master one of your tools that is within you and make it part of your equipment. At any rate, number four is bite the bullet. If it's beautiful to be alive, if you're having a great time in touring, you don't want to sleep. <laughs> you want to go. Right? If it's a bore, it's all right. Might as well. Spend the, the, the morning in the hotel, so what if we get out by 5 o'clock? There's <laughs> nothing to see in this town anyway. But if it's fascinating, it's great, and, uh, wow, and what an experience, and you want to get out 5 o'clock in the morning. 
You don't want to waste a moment of an opportunity. Is life an opportunity? Yeah, friends, you better decide. This is the opportunity of your life. <laughs> right? Life is the opportunity of your life. You don't want to waste one moment of it. Yeah? Yes. Ah, you see, that's another myth. The question is asked, what's your name? Craig. Craig? Craig asks, isn't it important to relax mentally as well as, as, well as physically? And this is, again, a myth. In, in, in uh, Western civilization, uh, there's a, a certain point in your studies, you feel, I can't go anymore, I can't go anymore, so what do I do? I lean back, I uh, take a drag of, uh, you know, drag, or I, uh, I listen to some rock music, bang out of the head, you know. Yeah. And now I'm going to reconcentrate. And you know how darn hard it is to get back and reconcentrate, yeah. But you say, well, I should be refreshed. Yeah, but uh, I don't feel like starting the motor again. So being refreshed doesn't mean you turn off the motor. In Judaism, we say you want to relax. Yeah. Switch hands. Switch fields. So now think about your wife and kids. Think about a beautiful scene that you had, the ascetic experience. Think about love. Think about the essence of music. Da -da 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 -da. And then you recharge. Right? All right, now we can go back and study. Instead of turning off your mind, you know, when you turn off that mind and you want to turn it back on, uh, uh, you know how, how difficult it is, yeah? All right, so number four is bite that bow, decide you want to live, life is beautiful, you don't want to waste a moment of it. Number five is, so what are you going to use? What are you going to study? Right? You're touring, what does that mean? Define it. Why are you touring? To get away from, from thinking? No. To get some energy into living, some experiences of life? How are you going to do it? What, why, how? You're going to smack your kids? What are you going to do? You're going to crush their impulses to rebellion and turn them into neat little zombies? Is that your point? No, 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 no that's not it. So what are you going to do? You're going to get them to listen. Yeah? Now why? Why? Because otherwise it will be a terrible disaster for me or for them. Yeah? Now how are you going to do it? I'm going to knock the living down. No, no, no. Let's see. Is there a better way? <laughs> yeah? Connect your mind for living. What? Why? How? Just that formula. You've got to switch it around a little bit because here you know why. Uh, but you understand? You've got to get into the why in order to know how to do how. Very good. Connect your mind into living. That's the most important aspect. But number six is that there are times you're on a bus. Fill your time. So you decide, what am I doing? I'm going to... Jerusalem. Why am I going to Jerusalem? To go to Yeshiva, of course. How am I going to do it? <laughs> yeah, all right, fine. But now you're on the bus. How are you going to fill in the time? You're in the dentist's office. How are you going to fill in the time? Oh, is this going to hurt? Is this going to hurt? Is this going to hurt? It's certainly going to hurt. Yeah. So what, you know, what, what, what are you doing then? Yeah. How do you fill in time? So always you have enough to think about living. Ask about your father and your mother. You love them? What do you love about them? What do you want to tell them? What would you like to change about them? You've got enough to think about. You're alive. You're living. How about your wife? Always think about your wife. What would you like to tell them? Why'd you marry her? Remember why you married her. How about your children? Do you understand them fully? But you have enough to think about. Just focus your attention. You're in a business. You know that when you're in a business deal, even if you've never been in a business deal, right? But if you're in a business deal and you're traveling in a car and you're the driver, you've got to be extra careful not to get into an accident because you're thinking about, when, well, do we have to take care of this and that? And do, yeah. When it's a business deal, you know you're, you're, you're on. Yeah. All right. You're alive. You're still alive. You're not 99 years old. Yeah. You're still alive. You still have some hopes, ambitions. What are your ambitions? Think about yourself. You have a lot to think about. Get as involved as when you're in a business deal. Number seven is, 
that the Jewish way, Jewish consciousness is that we had a Seder, plan ahead. Know what is your priority. Don't wait until you're in a dentist office and until you're on a bus and until somebody doesn't show up for an appointment and ask yourself, what am I going to do with my time? Plan ahead. What do you want to study? What do you want to grow in? What do you need to know? But number eight is that in Jewish consciousness it was till your deathbed. All your life means we never had a problem with retirement. What am I going to do when I retire? <laughs> what am I going to do when I retire? I'll live. <laughs> well, but I, I, what are you going to do? What are you talking about? Be happy. I love humanity. I'll, I'll have greatness. I'll be good. I'll, oh, that's what I'll do when I retire. Yeah. And I just want to, to focus your attention. You know, you know what a Jew says on his deathbed before you die? Shema. Now, you know why you say Shema Yisrael? Because obviously if the Almighty told us to say it in the morning and say it at night and put it on our doorsteps, it's the secret of existence in one capsule form that you should study every day. Yeah? Just imagine the doctor tells you you got one more day to live. <gasps> What's life about? What was it about? The ultimate motivation. Make one more shot. Don't give up. One more effort to really understand what it was really about. One more effort to hit the home run. Roman numeral two is um, continuous. He said the second aspect of constant study is a continuous study, which means no interruption. So number one of this is don't interrupt for anything. You're going to study for finals. You're going to study not for finals. You're going to study... That's what you're going to do. So don't study and go and get yourself a Coke and sit down with the book and close the window and then sit down with the book and open the window and then sit down the book and open the radio and then sit down the book and say, hey, what are you studying? And then, no, no. You're going to study an hour? Sit down with the book and stay there. Number two, a Jewish concept. You got four hours to study? It's better to study two hours with no interruptions than four hours at 15 minutes and walk around for a moment. Better. Two hours at a stretch. Zing. There's a power to it. Number three in Jewish consciousness, and I, I don't say that I, I'm up to it, but we're talking about Jewish consciousness when the Jewish people were, were together, when we trained. I was once on, on a flight to the United States and I always take the, the aisle seat because, uh, you know, it's, uh, and I don't want to, to step on people and get out, but I can't sit 10 hours, 15 hours, you know. And there was a guy on the inside, and I'm always ready to let a guy out. He never stood up the whole way. He never, never got out. I asked him, hey, tell me, don't you, you know. <laughs> what? He says, oh, he says, listen, he says, when I was a kid, I, he grew up in Hungary. He said, I used to go to, to Cheder, 5 o'clock in the morning, and stay until 8 o'clock at night. And we weren't allowed to move a hand. Hmm? You're there, fully there. He says, this is nothing. <laughs> you got it? You got it? I was growing up in the United States where we used to play stickball and <laughs> handball, you know. We're just running around, yeah? I still take the aisle seat. <laughs> Number four is that continuous means and Jewish consciousness. Go to sleep with a problem and wake up. You'll find that you've moved along. It's through your sleep too. All right, Roman numeral three is consistent study. What does consistent study mean? So number one of this is set time, day in and day out for study. The second aspect, B of this is, like in university, the same time you study the same subject, you know, that makes a rhythm, that sets you. If you don't, if, you, if they splattered you around and they moved around the subject in the morning, in the afternoon, in the uh, it, would, it would be terribly frustrating and worse. Do the same for yourself. Do you see that? For your study. Number three is that, uh, number two is that you should use natural and reasonable rhythm 
to fortify your study. So in Jewish consciousness, when you wake up in the morning, you know what you study? The first thing a Jew says, do you know what the first thing a Jew says is? Thank God I'm alive. You're not into thanking God. Says it's great to be alive. What's great about it? Get up on the right side of the bed, not the left side of the bed. Yeah? Before you go home, after you go to work, before you go home, before you see your wife and your kids, yeah, you know what you should be thinking? What should you be thinking? Come on, you know what you should be thinking. Remember how you loved her before you got married. Yeah? That's the way you should walk through that door. Not I'm tired today. Give me my drink. That's the wrong set. <laughs> and that doesn't mean you're repeating. You're appreciating it. You're reaffirming it. You're upgrading it. You know that there are rhythms that you should have. Get those rhythms into you. Number three. In Jewish consciousness, we had a concept of a masmid. You ever hear of a masmid? There were poems written to the masmid. The masmid was the guy who fulfilled constant study. He was always learning. So the Western world and a few of the Yiddish writers spoke about the masmid that was up all night and all day. And That wasn't our concept of the masmid. That wasn't the Jewish concept. The masmid, the guy who fulfilled this, we had more respect for a guy who was consistent. Consistent. He learned four hours a day, ten hours a day, seven hours a day. 365 days a year than the guy who would just involve himself in study and cram for the five days before the final. That's no masmid. <laughs> yeah. So if you want to know the power of the masmid, now, set for yourself this obligation. The rest of your life, the rest of your life, one half an hour, 365 days a year at a particular time 6.15 a.m. nobody will interrupt you you're going to study Jewish content do you see the power of that? okay, you're not ready for that yet? so commit yourself when you wake up in the morning it's great to be alive commit yourself 365 days a year the rest of your life this is what I'm going to do power you know you're going to change. Your life is going to be different. You can just feel it. This would be my assignment for, for this. Make one commitment for the rest of your life. Come on, a little one, a little teensy, teensy one. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, 10 minutes of learning of Judaism every day when you wake up, or 10 minutes at a particular hour, come on, make some commitment. Figure it out. Just feel that power. Yeah. Roman numeral four. Repetitive study. Repetitive study means that in Judaism we say you've got to go over. Number one is understand the same subject all your life. And in Jewish consciousness we have many subjects that we do that. For instance, the Shema, Hero Israel. It's the same subject. We do it in the morning. We do it at night. And a few times during the day. Hero Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. But well, we do it constantly. Why? It's a deep one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. I mean, <laughs> with all your desire. The love of God, that's the ultimate pleasure. You want to know what the ultimate pleasure is? The love of God. You want to know how to get it? Stick around. We'll give you a class. Oh, we'll teach you how. <laughs> we mean business with Jewish people. We studied a lot. We know a little bit about it. Yeah. So the same subject. So... You, number two, is what about yourself? What are you going to study every day of your life for the rest of your life? What in the world is important enough for you to study every day of your life for the rest of your life? So in Judaism, we say Jewish consciousness is the first thing that you should study every day of your life for the rest of your life is what are you living for? Bottom line, do you want to be famous? Mike, what, what do you really want out of life? Fame? Do you want to help humanity? Is that the, the bottom line? You want self-respect, you want to do something that's valuable. Is that the bottom line? Yeah, there's a lot of things you want. You want a yacht, you want, you want people to like you. Yeah, but bottom line. And if you come across a wise man, he'll tell you there are five classes of pleasure, Mike. Fifth class is wealth. Fourth class is children. 
Then you got third, second, and first class. I'll teach you the categories and how to get them. Then you're going to walk away and you're going to stay here. If you've been worrying about it, and you know, worrying, if you've been thinking about it for a couple of months before you came here, you know, <laughs> you'd be stuck with a pen. Do you, do you see that? Because you really want to know, you know, I've, I've been thinking, what pleasure do I want? Hey, you know what pleasures are? Huh? Oh! Eureka! Gold! But the first time you think of it, what pleasures do I want? Do I really want to know what my pleasures are? But, all right, number three is definitely realize that your family, your business, your potential, this business of living is something that you've got to study every day of your life, the rest of your life. You've got to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Do, do you see that? Don't think that you know how to deal with children because you read one child guidance book. Yeah. It's infinite. So keep asking yourself, what can I do to get them more charged up, to give them a sense of living, to give them pleasure, to get them to listen to each other, to love each other. Da, 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 da. All right, number four is that Jewish consciousness is, when you hear something that's important, you repeat it 40 times on the place. The rabbis of the Mishnah, the rabbis of the Talmud, when they heard something that they never heard before, on the spot they would repeat it 40 times. Now they used the same words because they were able to study. This was a Jewish thing. They were able to think about it even though they were using the same exact words. If we use the same exact words, then we become zombies. You know, it's, it's idiot words. But for instance, if they heard that happiness means to take pleasure in having hands and feet as if it's the first time you had them, that's one measure of happiness, and it's made sense, they would say, you know, happiness is to really appreciate it as if the first time that you had hands, that you could touch, that you... Happiness means 40 times on the spot in different ways. Happiness means to, to feel the pleasure of moving your arms. Happiness is to take the pleasures that are constant and focus on them and appreciate them. Happiness is from 40 different ways so that zingo, it's there. It's not going to be disappeared and in the garbage pail and left behind. So when you hear something that's important for living, repeat it 40 times. The rabbis would repeat it 101 times if it was a top priority. 101 times on the spot. Now what do you do about it for living? You can have an insight in your children. You can have an insight in business, in friendship. And you figure, oh, now I know how to be loose and friendly with people. Did you ever have that feeling? That's the way you say hello to someone and start a conversation. It was beautiful, right? And I'll never have any problem talking to a stranger anymore. Uh, I, what did I do? No, no, define it and repeat it 40 times on the spot. Say so if you have, uh, repeat, 101 times, don't yell at your wife. Repeat it in a lot of different ways. You have a good chance, but you'll quit. <laughs> you get it? But you're thinking, oh, I realize, oh, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, this is the way to do business. Baloney! You're going to do it a thousand and one times over again. You're not going to study the beginning of the term. You're going to abuse your children. You're going to waste your time in business. And you're going to be gullible and buy on the tip in the stock market. And you repeat it. <laughs> He'll repeat it. Oh, I did it once. You'll do it again. <laughs> this is us human beings. Yeah? Even though we have the insight. It's gone. But number five is, in Jewish consciousness, we had such things as slogans. All of Pirkei Avot is a slogan. A slogan, meaning something that you repeated time and time again. That's the idea of remember the Alamo. Remember Pearl Harbor. Something that moves, use that movement. I've got to get the most out of my time. I want to live to the hilt. Whatever moves you and picks you up and gets you energized, do it again. And again and again. You wore it out, go get yourself another slogan. Yeah? Whatever hits you particularly, then keep plugging it. Walk around as a refrain, you know? Background music. Yeah? Mm, it's power. All right, number, uh, Roman numeral five is pervasive. The mission in Pekavod says, I say to you, kva um aroi. Make your learning, your study of life, that is you, kva, keva means you, that's where you live, 
or malachtacha and your profession aray. That's something that you do occasionally. So the concept over there is somebody asks you, Jeff, what do you do? I'm almost a lawyer. I'm almost a lawyer. In a little while, I'll be a lawyer. So what do you do? I'm an engineer. What do you do? I'm a mathematician. What do you do? I'm an accountant. This is a Western way of thinking, right? In Judaism, we look at it as if the mission is telling us, wrong, wrong. The mission is saying, that's like if you're asking a guy who's drinking coffee, you say, what do you do? I'm a coffee drinker. <laughs> you say, you're a coffee drinker? How do you make a living doing that? Yeah? What, uh, who pays you to drink coffee, right? So to us, a guy says, I'm a lawyer, would mean that he's locked in a closet, you know, and they say, a brief, a brief. He says, all right. And he comes out, finishes his brief, back in the closet. Yeah. I'm a lawyer, right? And I'm a lawyer. That's what you do to make a living. I drink coffee for the moment, yeah? That's not me. Don't identify with that. You're not a lawyer, Jeff. You're a breathing, live human being who desires greatness. Who identify with that. It's pervasive means for the rest of your life define yourself as a human being which means I am seeking pleasure meaning life define that that is you that's the essence that is what living is really about All right, now why do we need these five aspects in order to really live so the first is that look we gave the example, you're sitting in a bus, you see somebody throwing out five cents out of the window. You know, he doesn't understand what money is about. He wouldn't lend him a nickel. You throw away five minutes, you don't understand what living is about. It's worthless to give you 120 years. You'll just waste 120. If you appreciate life, you don't waste a moment. Don't throw it away. But two of this is that the rabbis say in the Torah, the Bible says that Avram Avinu, Avram Zokain, was old, bo, be yomov. He came with his days. So the rabbis point out, and they say, what do you mean he became old, he came with his days? How else do you get old? Can you get old without coming with your days? They say, yes. The large majority of mankind get old without their days. How many days will you have when you're old? How many days did you really use? How many days have you used in the last year? Your growth was how many days? How many real days? Put together the moments that you grew. The insights. The changes. Maybe you'll get a whole day out of it. Out of 365. Do you understand? That's tragedy. You got 365 days. Come with a whole year. Grow every moment of your life. So to show you, to focus you in on this is really who should be growing more, you as an adult, as a 20-year-old, as a 25-year-old, or a 5-year-old kid? You're an adult. You have your faculties with you, yeah? Now, a 5-year-old kid is beautiful. But if you come back and he's 10 years old, and he's doing the same thing that he did when he was 5 years old, you would know that you are witnessing a tragedy. Is that right? A 10-year-old who's normal is a beautiful thing. But if you come back and he's 15 years old and he's doing the same beautiful things that he did when he was 10 years old, tragedy. A 15-year-old might not look so beautiful in our generation, but they're beautiful, yeah? But you come back when he's 20 years old and he's doing the same thing he did when he was 15 years old, tragedy. A 20-year-old is a beautiful thing. You come back and he's 25 years old and he's doing the same things that he was doing when he was 20 years old. Is that a tragedy? 25-year-old is a beautiful thing. Come back when he's 30 and he's doing the very same things that he was doing when he was 25-year-old. Tragedy. The worst. 30 to 35? 35 to 40, the biggest tragedy is when you're 60 and come back when he's 65, it's the same old guy. Maybe regressed a little bit. It's tragedy. You don't have your wits about you, for goodness sake. Change, move, live. But you've got to learn how to grow now. To grow. Every day is growth. That's living. 
Every day is growth. That's living. All right, look. Do that assignment. Remember the assignment? What's the assignment? Yeah? Undertake one thing for the rest of your life. Yeah? Try to move it up to two, three things. When you wake up, you're going to study what living is about the rest of your life, 365 days a year. A commitment. Try it out. You've been listening to the 48 Ways to Wisdom 